you students. Today we are going to do a quick video on concept maps. All right, a lot of your homework assignments this semester are going to involve these things called concept maps. And what's going to happen is you are going to be given a list of terms, a list of term statements. Like I have a list of term statements here, like homeostasis, effectors, receptors, positive feedback, etc. I've got like, I don't know, 12 things here. And a concept map will arrange these things into sort of like a chart, connecting things, adding words of to explain how things are related. But although ultimately we want some sort of web, some sort of chart that connects everything. And that's my goal here is to make a concept map for these terms and try and help you get an idea of what this entails. Now, one of the things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look up all these things. If you don't know what each, each one of these things is, it is hard to do this correctly, obviously, right? Because the goal of these is to explain basically kind of what these things are and how they relate to one another. And so you got to know the definitions of these things. So a good place to start is by making sure you know what all these things are, making sure you know the definitions. Okay? And you got to think about it too and think about how things could best relate. You can kind of play with it as well. Now, obviously to make it easier to show you this video, I'm doing mine here on, on a Google Doc. It's actually easier... For I, well, I think it's easier to write things out. That's me personally. But I'm showing you on a Google Doc. And you can do it any way you want. It doesn't matter whether you write it out, you do it on a computer, whatever. Anything is good. Okay. That being said, let's start trying to figure this one out. Let's do that. So, what do I got here? I got homeostasis. I got life. I got all sorts of different things here. Now, I know that... One of the things that matters for life is homeostasis. I mean, life, literally, life is going to depend on homeostasis. So I'm, I'm going to draw an arrow between those two, and then I'm going to stick the, the words depends. That might make, make my font a little smaller there, too, just to make everything fit nicely. I'm going to say life depends on, yeah, and I'm going to have that connect to, I'm going to move it up a little bit, put it on the arrow. There we go. Life depends on homeostasis. Beautiful. Well, if you notice this guy right here, maintaining a dynamic state, dynamically stable internal state, that is homeostasis. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to grab this arrow and let's see if I can grab the arrow and the oh, I can't do it. Well, I'm going to grab that at least. I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to copy that textbook just so I can use it again over here. Homeostasis I'm going to change it a little bit. Homeostasis is defined as homeostasis is defined as maintaining a dynamically stable internal state. Well, there we go. All right, good. I've got three things done so far. Well, I'm going to look at these again, and the next thing I'm going to grab is this word variables here. All right, variables are the things that are going to be stable. Okay? So, the things that are stable are the variables. So I'm going to somehow connect those, those two guys. Go like that. I'm going to bring my text box back. And I'm going to say, and by the way, the words I'm using here don't, you know, aren't exact, right? You could write your own thing and get the the as long as you get the point across the things that are stable are kept stable are variables the things that are kept stable are variables perfect 
All right, we got four down. We're a third of the way done. Well, there's more stuff. A stimulus, a stimulus is a change in a variable. A stimulus is a change in a variable. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect those guys. Da -da -da, there we go. I already copied that one. So a stimulus is a change in a variable. Okay. And by the way, I just noticed we have some variables down here. Blood pH, body temperature. These are examples of variables, examples of things we want to keep stable in this idea of homeostasis. So I'm going to draw a little line here, like so. And I'm going to draw some arrows. There we go. I'll kind of do these two guys together. One arrow there and another arrow there. So these two guys are examples. So I'm going to grab that text box I had earlier. Yep, that's two examples right there. So I've got that. Two examples are body temp and blood pH. All right, perfect. We're getting, we're doing great here. Well, a receptor is something that detects a stimulus. So I'm gonna drag that over there. Drag that over there. I'm gonna bust out an arrow. I'm gonna bring my text box back because receptors are going to detect a stimulus. So let's add that, detect a stimulus. Effectors, well, what are they gonna do? They are going to, whoops, they are going to fix a stimulus, bring it back to the stable state. So I'm gonna bring the next guy over here, I'm gonna, change that. If I could highlight it, I would. I'm just going to delete it all. There we go. Effectors fix a stimulus. I'm going to draw an arrow there as well. This is fantastic. Now, but you got to realize, if you don't know what these things are, if you haven't looked these things up, it is hard to do this and hard to make this, okay? And the process of maintaining a dynamically stable state requires something called negative feedback. So I'm going to draw an arrow there and say, whoops, looks like I copied that one. Let's copy this one. There we go. Requires negative Whoops, I didn't need to rewrite negative, did I? Requires negative feedback. So doing homeostasis requires negative feedback. Receptors and effectors are both part of negative feedback. Ah. Both part of negative feedback. So let's add that. Kind of add those two arrows together like, like so. All right, this is good. And you know what? This may not be the, the perfect example, but it's, it, it's good. Now, positive feedback is the opposite of negative feedback. So positive feedback doesn't help us maintain things. It helps us take things, take things away from a set point. So, I'm going to add the word, I'm going to add the, a statement here saying something like, is the opposite of. So let's add that. Is the opposite of. And one thing that involves positive feedback is blood clotting. Blood clotting is an example of, of a positive feedback situation. 
So I'm going to get an arrow there. I'm going to get the word example down there. Dun, dun. Example. Boom. And I am done my concept map. There it is. I made this web connecting all these different parts. I have arrows going between them. I have a lot of linking words. You gotta have linking words. You can't just have arrows. You gotta have linking words. A lot of linking words. Every arrow's got a linking word. This is perfect. I've got things connected. Well, I could have done it differently. It, I could have, there, there's more than one way to, to skin this cat here. But this is good. Um, so you're gonna do a lot of these. The fur, you've got one of these to do, I think, in week one, and definitely more throughout the semester. Hopefully this video helps. Figure out how to do these. If not, as always, email me. Let me know your questions, okay? All right, bye-bye.